Welcome back to the Masonic Audiobook Library. Today we bring you The Mysteries of the Kabbalah by Elias Kewers, originally published in 1922. The Kabbalistic Definition of the Snake Nachesh. The word, according to the secret tradition, designates the deep interior feel inviting an entity to its own individual existence, making it ardently desired to preserve and enlarge it. Nachash, the snake within man, is the radical egotism which causes an individual being to make it itself center and to relate everything else to it. Moses defines this sentiment as the seducing passion of elementary nature and the secret spring with which the Creator has provided all animate things in nature. We know it by the name of natural instinct. Nachash is not to be understood as a separate being, but rather as a central movement given to matter a hidden spring acting in the depths of things. The self-seeking elements within man, the blind passions common to us all in our early stages of evolution, are the offspring of the snake, Nachash. This word stands for an unreasoning, self-centered instinct in all the Oriental languages. It means an internal ardor, a centralized fire, agitated by a violent movement and seeking to extend itself. The childache derives from it all ideas of fear, sorrow, anxiety, and evil and painful passions. In the Arabic, Syriac, and Ethiopian, it signifies a tormenting affliction. The lesson of Natchish, the snake. All love emotions are expansive. All emotions of hatred are restrictive. Hope and faith are of the nature of love and expand the soul, while fear and doubt and despair are of the nature of hate and contract our souls, making us feel uneasy and unhappy. The snake stands for contraction, for tightness and indrawing. While men fight and quarrel with one another, they always resemble more or less the old snake, each drawing to its side, anxious for self-preservation. Freedom from the snake's anguish can only be had by ceasing from the snake's ways and learning to obey the law of love, the first dictate of which is self-sacrifice. There is no death, there is no destruction. All is but change and transformation, first the caterpillar, then the chrysalis, then the beautiful butterfly. Likewise, first physical man, then the mighty mind, and at last the noble soul, the brotherhood of the White Lodge. In the days of old, when physical force was the chief arbiter between man and man, those that loved knowledge were compelled to abandon the affairs of this world and to retire to the forests and hills in order to pursue their studies. They could never maintain their position among fighting and cruel tyrants and were obliged to live solitary lives, contenting themselves with a few morsels of bread to satisfy their hunger and plain water to quench their thirst. They slept on the bare earth and from early morning till late at night they meditated and studied and prayed. These were the nanus and lactus of the past. Nowadays there are schools and colleges and societies and institutions where the ancient wisdom can be studied quite comfortably in easy chairs, with the use of electric light and central heating systems to keep us oblivious to the hardships of the outside world. In themselves, these blessings of modern civilization are quite harmless, but in an indirect manner they do injure us. The pure consciousness of man is not enriched by study per study, and the increase of knowledge is not the highest aim of man, it is only if knowledge is made subservient to love that it fulfills its mission. Therefore, when the acquisition of learning is made possible in the midst of comforts and even luxury, the danger always exists of hardening the mind and making it miss the beautiful lessons of charity, forgiveness, and forbearance, while those who are trained by hardships and have to learn their lessons on empty or half-filled stomachs are more accessible to the appeals of suffering and want. Consequently, the deprivations which the poor students had to undergo in olden times taught them as much, if not more, as their books, whereas the well-off students of today are ever in peril of losing their souls while enlarging their minds. The Brotherhood of the White Lodge is a body of great men whose souls have been made perfect through suffering. They watch over humanity from their exalted planes on which their spiritual status enables them to live and pour down upon it knowledge and wisdom and skill in the arts and crafts according as the world's karma permits them to do so. They are always affiliated to those organizations on earth whose members are single-minded 
and true-hearted and genuinely desirous of the welfare of the race. Especially are they interested in the advancement of science, philosophy, and religion, and all public bodies promoting these subjects are helped, without knowing whence the help cometh, by the Brotherhood of the White Lodge. For the last three decades there has been a steady and growing increase of knowledge in all departments of human activity. Inventions have multiplied, and discoveries of unsuspected laws of nature are being made on every hand. Philosophic and scientific thought has never been so abundant and so brilliant as it is today, but the receivers of the gifts know not the givers, and often frustrate the gracious purposes which were to be served by the bestowal of the gifts. The reason is not far to seek, it is to be found in the heart of man, where is the spring of all actions. To serve faithfully the masters of wisdom, the givers of all good gifts, the heart must be pure and the whole nature must have been regenerated. But this is a process of slow growth and requires the subduel of the personality and the crushing of the lower nature. It is only those in whom personality has been suppressed that be made perfect channels for the eternal truths. As long as the snake is alive, man can only be an inferior instrument of nature. When the old Adam dies and the snake has given up its ghost, then can man become a servant of the great lords and cooperate with them here on earth. Therefore it often happens that those that are to be honored by the king of kings and lord of lords must first be slaves and servants and learn to obey before they are allowed to command. Thus in modern times disciples are thrown into all sorts of trials and sorrows. Poverty, disease, and friendlessness they must know them all until the last vestige of pride and aloofness has disappeared from their mental makeup. So it comes to it that, let the poverty stricken Nanus and the Bacchus of old, the refined students of today have likewise to undergo the same training if they are to be fitted as messengers of the White Lodge. They must taste the bitterness of the cup unto the very dregs, and through their own sufferings learn to sympathize with those of others. This is the straight and narrow way which leadeth unto life eternal. This is the working of the white law, the operations of which are often so puzzling to the eyes of flesh. It is only our own blindness and the narrowness of our own life that makes us find fault with the law, which is both wise and good. What we see in the other life of an individual is but an infinitesimal particle of what is going on within him. The interior life of the soul is the reality that matters, and it is here that the work of redemption of every soul is going on. Whatever the outer life is clouded, the inner is touched, and this method is resorted to by the Brotherhood of the White Lodge to train their disciples on the earth plain. The ancient sages came from the poorest families, and the prophets of the future will have to be saved from the gutter before they can deliver their message. It behooves, therefore, those who are anxious to do the Master's will to be mindful of these facts. The White Lodge has its representatives on earth, its messengers and teachers and pupils. What we see of all these is only as much as we deserve to see. Let us beware of putting a stumbling block in the path of even the least of these, lest in so doing we be found among those who work against the good law and against the will of its blessed custodians, the Brotherhood of the White Lodge. Next, initiation according to the Kabbalah, from a scientific and philosophical point of view.